Hello and welcome in the Money Media, California Crown coverage, a quintet of stakes races on the day. In this video, we're going to talk about the last four graded stakes, the three California Crown races. We've also got three Breeders' Cup winning your in races. They're not, two of them are the same, two of them are different. We're basically covering everything here, and we're going to start off by talking about the John Henry turf. JK, what's your view on uh, on this one? Very, very interesting race to be sure uh you've got gold phoenix this is sort of like his white whale uh, a race he's tried to win a couple of times had some rough trips but he's won everything else in california is this where he wins this race well look i i i i don't have a, a problem with him as an individual but there's a couple horses in here i like a little bit more so while he might get it done here uh the 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 other phil damato was the one that kind of caught my attention and there's probably a few of them. The three, what do we call this horse? Divine, Divin, Propos? Yeah, I, I, I can't decide if it's Divin or Divine. Uh, like Divine, Propos, Propos somehow sounds a little bit better. But I know the one you mean because this is the horse that I came up with too. Why don't you give the case first? Uh, look, it's just really simple. When it comes to these long-distance turf races, I'm looking for good internal moves, hidden moves that people might not see, and they might not be reflected in a final figure. A lot of times I make this comparison. If Usain Bolt were to walk away from the blocks for the first 10 meters of a 100-meter race and then the run the next 90 meters faster than he's ever run 90 meters, his final time is still going to be slower than anything he's ever done. I think a lot of times you can make that comparison when you're looking at these turf races that start off very slow. The horses come home really fast, but unfortunately the final time doesn't reflect that. I thought Divine or Divin – uh, let's go Divine. Divine Propos ran extremely well last time, and I think that he's going to appreciate this mile and a quarter. Uh, I think the mile and three-eighths last time was his best race that he's had in the U.S. I'm going to go with that horse on top, but I also don't want to ignore Belichnikov towards the outside, who I think also ran pretty well last time uh, in that race with Gold uh, Phoenix and Dicey Mochara. I, I think that those two horses make a ton of sense, A-type horses for me for the Phil D'Amato barn, but the top uh, choice will be the three uh, divine propos. Yeah, I, I mean, the distance I think is right. You're, you're right. No issue for this horse getting better all the time. And how about the trip this horse is going to get? Should get a good attacking spot, maybe just ahead of mid pack. Um, powerhouse barn and the figures this horse has running should make him competitive despite the seeming upgrade in company. You know, I'm not going to be a hero. Gold Phoenix will be on some tickets and A type as well. Second choice for me. But how about my goopy long shot in here, J.K., the seven big blue line going out for William Walden. What a year he's having. Claiming this horse two back for 80, one with him straight away in a dirt allowance. I don't know anything about the sire, if I'm being honest, but there is turf on the damn side. The best race this horse ran was a turf race, and it feels notable that that came at a mile at the more galloping Kentucky Downs, suggesting this horse could have the stamina for 10 furlongs on this oval. Definitely a horse I'm interested in. Not the most likely winner, but one that could hit the board. Do you see it or am I out to lunch? No, I, I mean, look, I mean, you're always out to lunch, but I, I can see it. I mean, it's a turf race going, uh, you know, it's a turf race. It's all about trips in here. So I, I, I often don't have too many issues with too many horses that people select in grass racing. Let's pivot to the next race on the card that we're going to talk about, the grade two Eddie D. We're going down the hill here. No, you always like that. Uh, and we have some East Coast form heading out west in the form of Big Invasion. Of course, you and I have both been big fans of for a long time. And my faith has wavered in him at times. Your faith has never wavered in Big Invasion. You had him last time. Do you like him right back here? Oh, God. That there's a, a short list of probably three horses that I have wished, and I had at one point, at one time or another, wished would run down the hill. Right? Famously, Bobby's kitten was a was a was a dream of mine to see run down the hill. That horse won the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. Uh, Big Invasion is on that list of horses that I have always wished would run down the hill. I think I even told. Uh, the Clement crew at one point 
that, oh my gosh, could you, I wish the Breeders' Cup was at Santa Anita this year. They were running down the hill because Big Invasion, I just, I cannot wait to see him running here. There is a 0% chance I will pick any other horse in here and I will be watching this race like the biggest fan you've ever seen when they turn across, they come across that dirt and to watch that, that horse on the outside come rolling. It's going to give me flashbacks of Bobby's kitten. I love big invasion going down the hill in the spot. I like him too. I mean, there is some question about the, the, the stamina, but he just feels like a horse who's supposed to be suited by it. I'm not going to worry about it. He should be in a, another one who should just get a, a, a great uh, trip. And I think, I think we might just get a backable price, JK, because of the questions about the downhill and just the fact that this is a big full field. I'm going to feather in some other backups in this spot. A runner like First Piece, I think is interesting, really likes the downhill, should get a good trip. A runner like Fast Buck, I think is a bit intriguing. Low profile connections could end up in a good position, but more than half my money is going through Big Invasion. You and I will be rowing in together in this year's California Crown, Eddie D. Let's get to the big one, the race that gives the day its name, the, I want to say the inaugural running, but it's obviously a race with other names that's been around for a long time. It's the grade one California Crown going a mile and an eighth on the dirt. National Treasure versus Moot. That seems to be the storyline. Is it as simple as that? And how do you separate them if you do? I think a lot of people are going to fall for the moose trap. And while there is an, op op an opportunity, I think, for moose to kind of grow up a little bit, right, to show that I'm a, I'm a I'm progressing three-year-old. Man, if you look at his last race, not counting National Treasure's last race, National Treasure had three races prior to that were faster at every point of call and from a pace figure standpoint and a final figure standpoint. I just think National Treasure is a little bit better. I also think that National Treasure and Muth both have similar styles, and I can't see Baffert getting too crazy with rating them. I think he's going to probably let them sit off of one another, but they're talented and they're going to run at each other. If one of them does and is able to kind of hold off the other one and win. In my opinion, it's going to be National Treasure. And if that doesn't happen, I think it sets up nicely for a horse like Senor Buscador, right? So National Treasure is the one I want in the war between him and Muth, which is weird considering the fact they're coming from the same barn. Senor Buscador is the one that I want if and when the race falls apart, which it potentially could depending what the strategy and what the instructions are on the two Baffert speed types. I think there's close to a 0% chance that the Baffert's do. I think they're going to back it down, team tactics. I mean, we've seen this movie before. I can't think of too many Baffert scrimmages where they dueled and another horse won. It has happened. I, I can think of there was that Yakteen horse a couple of years ago, uh, maybe it was, who benefited from a situation like that. But I think they're going to back it down. Here's my issue with National Treasure. The last race was bloody awful. I mean, as bad as it gets, you know, I thought it was tactics, but then there was the quotes from John Velasquez after the race that he just at no point had any horse. That just doesn't make me want to trust him. Meanwhile, Muth, very progressive. I know he was ridden last time, but I mean, he was off a six month layoff. Assuming he was maybe under trained coming into that, uh, you know, Clocker Report will provide some intel here. If, if we see National Treasure is A minuses and, and Muth is B's, I may reverse course here. But I do think. This might be an interesting chance for the progressive three-year-old, who I think will be a bigger, like more significantly a bigger price than National Treasure, than the morning line suggests. I think it's an interesting opportunity to press him. I feel like he can lock it up with them. I love Senor Buscador as a horse, but I think he's going to be flying late. I mean, Buscador becomes a little bit interesting for the classic in that scenario you and I have been talking about in other shows for, for Sierra Leone. If, you know, that ends up being some big pace burn up, um, Buscador is interesting, but I just think he's going to be against the flow here. We'll go head to head here. You take National Treasure. I'll take Muth, and we'll see where the chips fall in this year's California crown. One more race to talk about in this segment, and that is the grade two City of Hope. It is not doesn't have a California crown designation, but it does have a Breeders' Cup win and you're in designation. Very, very interesting race, I thought. Uh, Johannes making his return to the races in here. Uh, who do you like to close things out on this California crown on Saturday, JK? 
Oh, I love trickery in the spot. Uh, trickery for Graham Motion. He, he he sends him out there with his old buddy Johnny Velasquez aboard. And and this is one of those situations where you do have a progressive three year old. You look at Time Form US and 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 Trickery's last race got a one twenty four at Colonial. Johannes has been working, been running one twenty fives is the best thing that he's ever run. So you'd like to think that that Trickery can take another step forward as he continues to progress. He's an East Coast turf horse coming out west. I'm licking my chops at the four to five I see on Johannes and the eight to one I'm getting on Trickery. Uh, I, I love Trickery in the spot. Whoa, you think trickery will be that kind of price? That would be amazing. The, um, morning, already, the, morning, this, line, the morning line is eight to one. That's crazy. I mean, in a great way. I hope it's right because, I mean, I don't think it is, to be honest with you. But I, I would love it if it were. I mean, you already made a great point. It's the progressive three-year-old. This horse has been so cool this year. Second place finisher in that secretary has come back to frank that form. Should get an excellent spot. It's funny because this is one where – other speed figures agree with what you said about time form, but buyer has a chasm between Johannes and the rest of this field, but I'm just not sure it's fully warranted. Look, he can win. You can probably lock it up with the two of them, but I like trickery. I'll be pressing trickery in this spot. And um, in terms of a longer shot, I could see messing around the littlest bit underneath deeper backups with Almendaris, just because I thought he was really against the flow in that Del Mar race. Ended up finishing second. Thought he had an excuse two back two moving into a fast pace. He just, the problem with him is he's going to need a lot of things to go right. He's going to need a fast pace, which you may or may not get. Won't affect Trickery or Johannes that much because they'll be tactical. And he's going to need both of them to underperform. So more of an underneath type for me. Trickery all the way. We are in lockstep. Godspeed, JK, when it comes to this inaugural running of the California Crown. Make sure you subscribe to the In The Money Media YouTube channel to get all of our YouTube exclusive content and check back into space tomorrow. We've got another California Crown show with the likes of Jerry Bailey, Randy Moss, Brittany Erton, and, uh, and uh, how did I freeze? How did my brain, how did my brain <laughs> freeze on the fourth member of this team? Nick Locke. Sorry, Nick. It's going to be great. Make sure you check it out on the In The Money Media YouTube channel.